Welcome to the Beck and Siri Show. And here at Team Series Tri Club, it's not just about swim, bike, run. It's about who you become. On our show, we don't just talk to you about swimming, cycling, and running. We talk about mindset. We talk about fearless authenticity and being your very best self. This is Ashley from Team Serious Tri Club. On this episode, Beck and Siri talk about mini breaks and race tapers, adrenal fatigue, trainer rides, and bike time crunched athletes. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, We're back for amazing triathletes. We've missed you. We've missed you guys. How, How is are you all? Hopefully everybody knows that we're going live. I didn't announce it as an announcement. So we invited like 350 of our members, but we're so excited to be back. We know our other coaches have been taken over the last three weeks. And how amazing have they been? Let's They've give our coaches. Amazing. You guys rock. This is why you are our coaches. You're amazing. You're knowledgeable. You're insightful, you're loving, you're kind, you're giving, you're incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Rebecca, Maddie, Mary Carmen, we are so grateful to you. Thank you so much. I'm going to pin this as an announcement because I know how to do this now. So I can pin this as an announcement and pin it to the top so that people don't miss us. Hi, Janet. Great to see you, Janet. Oh, we have some people on. That's awesome. I wish we could actually see your faces. Hi, Amanda Vela. Well, we'll be doing Zooms more now, too. Kath so. Carpenter. Hi, Kath. Hi, Mark. Mark, I'm getting ready to put an order in soon because we are running out of our CBD. Probably may be interested as well, which Mark. Well, kindly. I know we've got to put our order in. Hi, Dan. Yeah. Amazing one. How are you? um hi patrice oh it's so good to see you guys we really missed you so it's so good amazing coaches they have been incredible and we really wanted you guys to get to know them better as well because we think they're so incredible so knowledgeable so insightful so amazing at what they do and we wanted you guys to get to know them better so um hi bertha oh it's so good to see you guys hi megan newman she just had a great trip. Thank you for all the videos, Megan. Guys, if you ever want your technique checked out by it your coaches. It keeps pausing for some reason. It keeps saying it's interrupted, and oh. I've seen that on here too. So I hope that's not your signal, Siri, but we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Yeah. Um, if you Dan, ever... thank you for the yoga. Yeah, Dan, oh, I did see a little bit of it. I was out giving medicine to the horses, but I was. I wish I could. I just need to commit to be able to do that more often. Yeah. So good for us. I wish I could do it too. Unfortunately, it's at a time that I'm always working. So Dan, I could commit, Dan, because I have adrenal fatigue and I have to really slow down. My numbers are lower than they were when I was an athlete, which is kind of scary to think that you know work can do that. But it's the truth. So I need to do more yoga, and mindfulness. And resting, stretching. yeah, so you guys, my wife has adrenal fatigue, and that is from working too hard like work, work. I don't work and, that much 45 minutes a day, so it's a little scary. <laughs> but it just goes to show you guys, especially if you have a coach, if you're going through an extra uh, stressful time at work, let your coach know mm. because that can you can literally overtrain with not even doing that much training if you're also experiencing a lot of stress in your job. Mm -hmm. So always let your coaches know so they can make adjustments to your training um, because it's important. You can't do it all, mm -hmm. all the time. Obviously. Like my wife does. My wife has so just taken what... care of me for a year and a half running all mm -hmm. our businesses. It's literally a year since her transplant. That's when I kind of hit a massive wall. I thought I was getting COVID. I had hives. It was just huge rash. I had really bad... Um, nausea and vomiting Ugh, it was terrible but I didn't have COVID thank God but anyway thank God but it just I think it's my boy just going oh everything's okay because she got through it for, for a year and her so far her blood tests are looking amazing so and they're better than mine <laughs> she's my super and she bench presses more than me no I don't but she, she keeps my saying no we're going to ask you strong and we're doing this stronger push with our chest right and I feel like I've got pretty big guns but this one pushes more no guns in two out of the four the only one I just get her on is the legs but that's I don't know she's going to catch up no. so there's just that one you guys but my wife was my superhero for the last year and a half by my side in every single moment she too you know when somebody goes through cancer Cancer, it's not just the person with cancer that goes through it, the family goes through it too. And it's tough. It's tough emotionally, it's tough physically. She was my superhero, running the businesses, running the horse ranch, um, and being there for me, my my rock of Gibraltar in every moment. So now, Becky, it's time to take care of you. I so know. what do you do when you have adrenal failure? Mm -hmm. You are meant to take 
three months she's not going to do well, any three or four weeks but i'm going to do a few any months. hard training mm -hmm. okay she is not going to get her heart rate out of the aerobic zone i'm going to take um i'm low on folate i'm low on vitamin d it's all common with this adrenal fatigue very low obviously cortisol and then yeah iron um what else vitamin d which is crazy because i'm out in the sun but there's a reason i'm not absorbing it and then uh what else was there just um i'm trying to think well um, you're meant to do oh, my everything. hormones there's not much i can do about that i'm not taking you know exogenous hormone sources <laughs> and you need to do more of what i do which is going to bed at the same time pretty much every night super mm -hmm. early getting plenty of sleep meditation meditation yep okay. i need to just basically do what my wife does um she takes care of her body way better than I do. I treat mine a little bit like a rental car. Although I do treat my rental car as well. Siri's had a lot of accidents in rental cars. <laughs> no, but you're... But it's not about me. It's about... I oh know we're trying to give but, knowledge here to help these guys uh, too. Becky wanted to know what were your symptoms? How did you know? What should you well, look for? I have pushed, pushed, pushed for like since I retired, basically 16, 2016. And then, um, yeah, they, they didn't come on quick. They was coming on slowly. But for the last year, I've been pushing, pushing, pushing. And I pretty much start work at seven in the morning, like most of you. And I don't finish till about 10 at night. So I was working out. I was doing about 120 hours a week where I was either on my computer or in front of my desk, my phone. Um, and then I sort of um, very irritable. That was one <laughs> symptom. Uh, loss of, I feel like I lost weight, like five or six pounds. I was eating like a champ. Um, lost muscle mass as well. I noticed that kind of pretty quickly, which was a little scary, but no real specific size other than um, just fatigue. Like I was meant to go for a swim and I was just falling asleep in the car. And I was, I, did, I got that as an athlete, but I knew that wasn't from working out. That was complete fatigue. Um, yeah, there weren't, there weren't really a lot of signs. So I'm sort of used to pushing through as an athlete. So you've got to really, I think that regular you guys, honestly, I'd say every athlete, blood so. test, yeah. athlete blood test you at least once a year, because I hadn't had that proper one for four years. Yeah. And that showed like, he said, he's never seen numbers like this, that this bad. So I was, I was a little scared, but ABT do it for under $300. You guys full blood panel. You've got to do it because when you organize a normal blood test at the doctors, you guys, and you just ask for a regular blood count, they don't do the full power. They don't do cause. They don't do thyroid. They don't do um, all the uh, DHEA and your um, testosterone and your female hormones as well. They don't include any of that. And he can get all of that for like under three hundred dollars. So I just think it's totally yeah, worth it. it's so worth it. And for my professional athletes, I want you guys to do it minimum every six months. Ideally, every three months would be amazing. But also, guys, like I said earlier, for age group athletes, you guys have careers, you guys have families. You I, guys know, have I, don't know, I was thinking that I don't know how they do it. So, I just don't know how you yeah. train for an Ironman and, and go triathlon and have a family and still. You're work. unbelievable. You're work. all heroes. But the thing is, yeah, it's crazy. I would rec recommend for you to do a blood test every three months as well. But I don't want to add even more stress to what's already going on in your life. Mm. But at least once a year, everybody should at least once a year get it checked. I would say ideally uh, every six months would be prevention fantastic. as well. I yeah. mean, series blood count showed extremely low, wasn't it? White blood cells, and they would never have known if they didn't see that. So it's just prevention too. That's yeah. how Amy Marsh found out about her cancer, and I just think that you've got to just not that you guys have any of that, but you want to be at optimal performance, and yeah. you can't be. I honestly, have so much kudos. My hat goes off to you guys that work full time, have or have families that's full time anyway, being a mum, and then a training, and let alone for a triathlon, but for a freaking Ironman, we have the luxury of sitting on our fat asses. Well, they're not fat, but sitting on our asses at home, recovering after every session i was never as tired as i am now when i'm working i don't know how you train and work i just don't know how you guys do you're it. amazing we got it easy you guys. you're amazing we got it easy you guys but yeah. that's why you've got to take care of you you guys you've got to thank your body every single day by how you eat how you hydrate your baths your epsom salt baths mm -hmm. whatever it is you need to truly take time out every single day to yeah, thank your out. body for all the amazing work that it does for you every single day, not just with your training, but with your family, with your careers, with everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So really, you gotta love yourself and care for yourself because if you're not around, everyone else is gonna suffer. And take care of yourself first so that you have all that you want to give, not only to your sport, but to your family, your loved ones, it's key. Take care of you first. I am typing in the code, you guys. I just typed it in. I'm going to find out the website too. I want to make sure I have the right one because athlete blood tests, I'm just, you guys, they look after us. Garrett's looked after us for many years. 
um, and they have a website and everything. I'll just put the code up on there, but you've got to go to Athlete Blood Test um, and I'll add the uh, website real quick. Let us know if you have any questions. Yeah, though, questions, you guys. guys. Let's see some questions. I don't see any yet, but this is why we're here. We want to help you with any questions you have. By the way, have. how beautiful is my wife's shirt? Oh, that was my Christmas present. Oh, you might present. want to be careful that button. Do that that button was button. my Christmas present, you guys, from my amazing wife. Yeah. And I love it. It's I love the color and I love the flannel. So thank mm. you, Becky, for that amazing. I just have to do that present. button up in case something popped out. Yeah. There. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing popping out, but okay. Good. Good to know. Um. Yeah, I guys. I love that we can see all the comments now. Yeah, this is great. We've got a new system here, you guys. And Mark has 18% off CBD. I'm telling you, this works. And you know what the perfect example is? Not just me, because I just felt it with my knees and all my pain, but inflammatory wise we had a horse now this is a funny example because i don't know about placebo our horse could not walk yesterday he'd hurt his knee i saw him actually slip i thought just give him it's 5,000 micrograms or milligrams 5,000 um level mark whatever that means and that's a lot we have a thousand mm. from mark and i gave the normal dose one big squirt I, god knows how much goes in there and um his knee wasn't it said within a couple yeah, of hours amazing. and the same with gracie she our dog this is not word of a lie she was limping and siri gave it to her in her breakfast bowl we probably gave her as much as we should give a horse but it, there's no danger to it and she's pretty much we're going to be a little careful with her but she looks like she's almost better so yeah, it is getting just like, it's amazing it's amazing just amazing so thank you mark it's incredible ali mini break for iron man training um i can refresh you on this tell me when your iron man is if you can put it in the chat um and so i know how much time between now and then or are you talking about the mini break two weeks out from the iron man just clarify so i know exactly I think that's what you're what talking, talking about, about okay break. let's talk about that because isn't it i always did three weeks out because i always have to get a niggle which we can talk about two three weeks out never two weeks out but most of her guys are two weeks so before an iron man because what i want to know is if you're too tired and you haven't you know uh recovered enough to be at your very best on race day um we want to find that out early mm -hmm. not late not on a you know friday that you take off before sunday race <laughs> so what i do is between 12 and 15 days before your ironman i will take a full day off so say for example on day 15 days to go you take that full day off 14 days out, you're going to just swim for 30 minutes, drills, super easy, just getting a feel for the water. 13 days out, you're going to do 30 minutes, super easy jog, 30 minutes, super easy spin on your bike, 30 minutes, super easy swim again. And then the next day you get back into your training. But this is super, super important. So if you do have residual fatigue at this point in time, this is going to allow you that chance to recover and still have, you know, 12 days to go before the race to, you know, get that mental reassurance that you're fit, you're strong, you're fast. But obviously for an Ironman, you're going to taper uh, for those last 12 days as well. And the biggest thing that I see happening at races like Kona are that race week age groupers are out there absolutely hammering every time like every day because there's so many people and it's exciting and they've got all this motivation and they're so fit don't leave it all on the training course in the days leading into the race yeah. this is when hard and easy is more important than ever before it's always important but this is when it's more important than ever before hard means hard and that's going to be a lot shorter efforts and less efforts because we're getting into a big race and easy needs to be super super easy do not live in the gray zone race week because that is just going to flatten you and you will find on race day that you cannot access those gears that you hope to after your taper boom beautiful and what about siri the little mini break when someone's in training we used to call it I used to call it three F's in one day, which means I had three terrible sessions um, in one day. That's when you know. But sometimes there are signs where an athlete may need a mini break just, just randomly during the week. Siri, can we talk about that real quick? Yeah, too? well, it's really important because I just gave this to one of our Karens and then Sunshine, 
one of our Etheridge girls, she also needed it because she just said she's so dehydrated and so sore and so tired. Yeah, you'll know, you guys. And if you don't have a coach, really be smart and listen to your body. If you're plateauing, which, which is going to happen, but you're also just feeling crappy and nothing feels good, take a three to five day break. And that means literally three to five days off. Mm -hmm. No swimming, no biking, no running literally three days off or five days off i'm giving maddie three days off this week she it was time for her to have a little bit of a break three to five days fully off now listen on that day you get back whether it's the fourth day or the sixth day mm -hmm. you're not going to feel amazing okay the First day only <laughs> thing that you will have lost in those three to five days is feel okay feeling good on the run feeling good on the bike the feel for the water on the sun. it only takes one day to get that's back. all you're going to lose Throw in some short efforts, like 15 second efforts on the swim, on the bike, on the run, whatever you do on that day. And the next day, I guarantee you, you're going to feel amazing. Okay. So these breaks, I give them, God, Rennie used to have probably um, three three day breaks and one five day break every season, every race season. So that means after the off season, all the months that she was racing, she would have three three day breaks and one five day break within that period of time up until the Ironman World Championships. You will not lose a thing, you will only gain. The cream rises to the top, all your hard work. When you start training after that break, you're actually gonna find a few days later that you're at a whole new level. So this is something I use all the time. The athletes hate it because they think they're gonna lose all their fitness and strength and speed in three days. Well, you're definitely not gonna lose your feel for one day, you're gonna get it back, you're gonna be better than ever. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to read the questions because you're better at answering than me. So Janet no, I'm Dixon, not. We yeah. love you, Janet Dixon. You're yes. amazing. So Janet, who's going to be our little pin-up girl for our website, we've got a couple of women that are going to be featuring because we had a lot of men up there. We're going to have more women featured. Janet is going to be one of these amazing ladies because she just embodies everything about our club. Yes, so, she does. So does Susie O'Shaughnessy. I saw she's doing a sprint race soon. So Susie, let us know if you have any questions or need any help but i think you're pretty set i mean you did a freaking like shorter one on your own without our help and ran 5k non-stop as well but janet wants to know about trainer rides and um when she gets at uh when she can't ride on the road she said she's listened to to our uh, tips about this but what would should be she be doing if she can't access the road and she has like a, a bike session a ride so a ride on the road jan and you can if, if i don't say what you want to say you mm -hmm. can add but janet i would say that if it's a hard session where you're doing hard efforts or intervals i would shorten the warm-up and shorten the warm down so that yeah you're probably doing 30 minutes less than you would on the road if it if was what, a two hour session or something. Yeah, if it was like meant to be two hours out on the road, it would be an hour and a half to shorten the warm up, shorten the warm down. But keep the efforts and intervals as long as they're listed. I know exactly where you're going with this. If it's a long ride, what we're looking for is time in the saddle. Oh, that's okay. It. So, and especially, I mean, you looked at a race like Daytona where people were in their bars for the entire ride. They never moved because it was a flat hurt. course. Yeah. You've got to train your body to be able to withstand that. So you want to do the same amount of time on the trainer, but be aware that because you're not getting out of the saddle and you're not stopping at stoplights, like move around a little, get mm -hmm. up, get out of your bars a bit and rest, get out of the saddle every once in a while and flush your legs out. But I would say- She's for... got six hours on Sunday, which is supposed okay. to be on the road. So I, okay. And but no efforts, just six hours it's aerobic, just time right? Length, so it's not gonna make a huge difference yeah. to that one. But I feel like if five. you did five hours, that's gonna be plenty. Six, I think, is is I, I don't know if I put my athletes on the trainer for six hours. What I would normally I do. wanna hear what the longest time anyone has done on a trainer nonstop. Put it on there. I bet you that at, I'd probably hopefully equal some of them. But put it on there. How long have you done? And what I would How be more done? likely to do, probably four, four hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot for IT. Um, but probably I would cut a six hour ride down to five um, and just make sure you move around a little bit, get out of the saddle every once in a while. That's going to help you a ton. Okay. Perfect. Eight hours. Yeah. yeah I've done eight hours too. Wow. I've, I Unreal. thought that no one would have gotten that, but I did eight hours once. That was when that's I was impressive. Yeah, but that was when I was a junior. Oh my god. My that's my impressive. Romanian my Romanian coach was like freaking hardcore. He made us do eight hours. I was training for a 40k. Yeah. He was like a Brett. 
Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Now, if you have intervals on that long ride, we did a couple. Of like, days. if your six-hour ride has some Ironman paced intervals, then I would cut it even shorter right. because you're going to end up um, covering. A, I I don't know. I would say five hours. Five hours. So some we'll people are putting that. up their times four and a half, four, four, yeah. four and a half, five. Yeah. So if it's a five hour, yeah, you could cut it to four, four and a half. But then when it's got like a ton of like intervals as well, like that's short. That's, that's, we say about 75%, don't we? That's a roundabout figure yeah. of 75, yeah. 80%. Yeah. 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 So any more questions, you guys? Five hours from Patrice. Boom. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing. Some of these guys, you guys are going to be out there riding for six, seven hours in Ironman. So you kind of got to get that. T if you've got a six hour ride and you know it's going to take you six hours, I'd be trying to hit that six hours as well. Yeah. There's something else to think about yeah. too. Like if that's the longest ride that you've got on your session on your uh, training peaks, then you want to be hitting that because if you're gonna take six, seven hours in the race, you want to try and be getting. And the way to do that could be to cut it in two. Oh, this is a good one. So, yeah, tell them about so, what you do there. And, and guys, this the reason, is a great option for you, Janet, and it would be actually probably even more beneficial. I agree. And Boom. guys, everyone is different. Okay, so so please keep in mind that I'm not wavering here. It's just every athlete is different in what they need. If you're someone who wants to know that you can ride for six hours, then what you could do is you could do like three hours in the morning and then have a little bit of a break, get off, walk around so that nothing tightens up and do another three hours like an hour later. Um, that's a great way to break it up, or you could even break it up into three. Or if you really are one of those people that says, and, and there are people like this, I have to do the six hours or I will not be confident to do an Ironman, then get on your bike, watch some movies, mm -hmm. um, be on the turbo, just make sure you stretch and get out of the saddle and keep that going for six hours. So it really depends on the person, but um let's yeah, talk about how we sometimes broke up like double bike sessions if somebody say isn't running or isn't able to run or even if they are when you're doing a bike block we sometimes do double bike sessions it's not recommended for everybody but some of your pros used to do it. what's some other stuff you do for a double bikes so like i have an athlete in germany mark i hope you're going to be watching this tomorrow i love this guy he's doing such an amazing job he's got kids he's got a job he's got a wife so a three or a long aerobic break, which we all know would be anywhere from two to three hours on the bike, followed immediately by a 30 to one hour run off the bike. Mm -hmm. That's kind of impossible for people that are working and have kids and other responsibilities. So what I have him do is he'll do two hours in the morning and then an hour in the evening followed by the run. Oh, so okay. he can more easily schedule that. Wow. And you know, oftentimes they'll ask, should I run off the first bike or the second bike? Always run off the second bike so that you're getting, you know, the full three hours ride in your legs. We want your legs to be tired. We yeah. want you to feel that residual fatigue and run off that. That's Smart. where you're going to get the best benefit. And would be like the strength in the morning and the intervals in the afternoon? Is that how you'd normally do it? Um, if that's well, what I'm talking about a three hour aerobic okay. ride, but if usually I would do, we used to do strength in the morning and then sometimes like the hard hit out. Yes. Great then, idea. Right. So the reason why I did that Beck, is you do the strength work in the morning. That strength work is going to make your legs feel like they're going to feel at the end of either your half Ironman bike or your Ironman bike. And it's at that point when your legs are smashed that we want to throw in the intervals mm -hmm. so that you start training your body to know that even with tired, fatigued legs, you can, you know, up it another gear mm -hmm. at the end of the ride, which we all want. We all want that last 20 K. Well, especially the pros, you know, they're going to want to know that oh, as geez. they go, they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So the strength in the morning will give you that feeling that you're going to have in the later miles on the bike in the race. And then boom, you hammer out the intervals and your body starts training for this. And it knows that even with tired legs, it can perform and step up. Amen. Okay. So there's a question here from Susie about training for a sprint race, as opposed to say Olympic or a half or Ironman. Um, obviously Ironman is a little bit of a different kettle of fish, but training for any distance, you still want to be training like five, as many days a week as you can. Like you don't want to just cut it down to three days because you're only doing a shorter distance. Like obviously the fitter you can get on swim, bike, run, you you definitely want to be still training five to seven days a week. We recommend like five to six. Um, and you'll have to probably, because you've gone from the short one to the sprint, 
or even if you're going sprint to Olympic, you're still definitely doing like pretty similar time wise um, from sprint to Olympic that you would be doing, you know, anyway, like you don't want to cut down to two days. Yeah, no, you great still want to train every day. Yeah. And, and remember guys, frequency is so important as well, especially on the swim, maintaining your feel for the yeah. water. The more times you can get in the pool, even if it's for a shorter period of time, the more days a week you can get in the pool, mm -hmm. the better you're going to swim because you're really staying in contact with the feel that's required for you to swim well. And the same thing on the bike and the run. So you'll train still, like Beck says, you know, five to six days a week, but your sessions will be shorter. A little shorter, yeah. And then if you've got, say, a swim is your weakness, maybe you do three swims, like one ride and one run or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, or three swims, two rides, two runs, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. whatever, kind of work on your weakness a little bit if you can, like focus more a little bit on that. But yeah, yeah. awesome. All right, any more questions, you guys? Would you ever, Carrie Preston, would you ever consider creating a Peloton ride workout to mimic a 60 to 90 tri-heel ride? Cadence and resistance suggestions. Creating a Peloton mm. ride workout. We, oh, do you mean just creating a workout? I'm not sure what the question so, is. So I, do... I think I have a feeling what you're asking, Carrie. And yes, I mean, our sessions that we create are, we're always trying to mimic the courses you're going to be racing on. For example, like uh, you're saying a 60 to 90 minute tri hill ride. What I would imagine is, okay, I'm going to work you, like work at getting you strong in the first half of the ride. So our hill say we'll do you know six times 10 minute hills Whoa. and one of them sorry it's a 60 minute ride yeah. i think she means like five times three minutes or something. one of them i'm gonna have you really grind like you're going up the steepest hill and you just don't have enough gears to keep your cadence up at your race cadence so i'll have you do that 10 minutes at like 50 to 60 cadence mimicking a really steep hill where you're really focusing on pushing down pulling up on the pedals and building strength then I'll follow that after your recovery with 10, 10 minutes at race cadence. That means what is the cadence that you can time trial your best, your very best. So, so let me just step back to teach people how to time trial. You find the most powerful cadence for you. Where do you ride most strong and most efficiently? Now for us, we, we always say between 78 and 84 is typically what I do with my athletes. So if you were doing like a rolling hills course, your goal would be to look at your cadence meter only. And if your most powerful cadence is 80, you will know exactly how to gear, whether you need to add resistance or take it off by the number on your cadence meter. You wanna see 80 all the time. So as you're going up and down the hills, you'll know exactly how to change gears because you're just looking to hit that number 80 for your cadence. Once you learn how to do this, when you can stay at your race cadence, no matter what the profile of the course is in that moment, you are gonna ride your fastest 20K, 40K, 90K, 180K, whatever it is. So that's one way you can do this. Or like I said, doing big gear work, you know, for doing six by five minutes, one big gear, one race cadence hard, one, one big gear, one race cadence hard, like that. So that's something that we so would We've only got like eight. a minute left, babe. Um, oh. It's 5.30. So let's see um, real quick. So something about um, maintaining high elbow during breath stroke. I don't know if that means breath stroke as in the breath stroke. So I don't know why you'd be doing breath stroke. I would recommend always doing for, what do you call it? I Front think she's saying... I, yeah, I, I think she, or she means like when she's breathing she's finding a hard to hold high elbow but you don't want high elbow on the recovery you guys well, that's old school it causes impingement you always want open arm recovery and then you're going to be entering straight out in front of your face the other thing about high elbow is you enter it too early and then you're trying to extend it out under the wall the other thing about high elbow is you usually cross over because your elbow comes in and you're entering right here okay so you're losing all of this and then you can always enter way too early with a high elbow you might enter there 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 with a straight arm open arm recovery you're going to enter straight out in front of your ear so it should be aligned with your ear and then the pull if you're having trouble giving your elbow up try keeping your wrist up first because you cannot really keep your elbow down without your wrist up so cock your wrist up first then put the elbow up the other thing grab a pair of paddles hold them over the top and you'll pull through like that so wear the paddles or don't do the strap up on the wrist because when you do try to drop your elbow you'll flip the paddle up mm. so we always say put the paddle the the paddle um over the top that that um what's it called the the strap and then the bottom strap don't put it on and that'll force you to get the elbow up boom um yeah 
okay awesome. with the other arm pulling yeah so i would just focus on what i said like keeping that wrist cocked up but we yeah. have to jump to another one but um yeah okay we'll do this quick one Jeanette's asking doing a half marathon on sunday i was thinking of biking 40 miles on saturday doing a half marathon on sunday thinking of biking 40 miles on saturday that all depends honestly that's individual what's are most you fit enough are you strong enough is it going to be easy for you to, is that like really easy for you to make that distance if that's a walk in the park for you and you can go really easy then i wouldn't be too worried but that i probably wouldn't even do a 60k ride the day before a half marathon okay but i have a question but be really quick sir we have okay. to actually go yeah. i have a question jeanette what matters more to you preparing for triathlon or running a great half marathon because if you're thinking long term mm -hmm. about your you know half uh half ironman that you're doing um then this is a great idea ride your 40 miles i'd even ride it strong and solid so that you are on sunday doing the half marathon with legs that you're going to have on race day doing your half ironman but That'd if it's a really thought. key goal half marathon you want to smash yeah. you're ready to kick ass in it and you not, not don't want to train through it you haven't been training for it you're tapering then um yeah don't do it i think yeah. it's a little much do like an hour easy spin so what what matters yeah. most to you and make your decision from that yeah you guys, this is amazing. Apparently we have to get off, but if you still have more questions, leave them in the chat. We'll answer them and later, you guys. More like an hour every week on Mondays, but today we had to squeeze something else in. But we, um, every Monday we're, we're back. We had to, we wanted to give the other coaches a chance because they really wanted to be on the live. So, but we're back, we're back with a vengeance. Yes, we are. We love you guys. Have an amazing night. Keep up the great work and be happy. We love you. Thank you guys. Ashley here. Thanks for joining our podcast. If you'd like to see these recordings live, please visit teamseriousclub.com and consider joining our team.